what is up ladies and gentlemen man here today I want to talk about the three modes of stepping on a spray wall like this and why I think that crappy as hell wooden screw on super small footholds are just brilliantly awesome. Let's get started. Using feet properly plays a crucial role in energy efficient rock climbing as we all know. All major techniques are somewhat conducted via feet so it makes sense to put some emphasis on stepping from time to time instead of just showcasing freaking small hand holes getting cranked down. In this episode I'd like to showcase what I call the three modes of stepping in the context of spray wall bouldering and how you can use them to train accuracy and technique as well as mechanical root understanding to potentially take your stepping and overall climbing to the next level. These modes represent rules your feet must follow on a certain boulder and as you can imagine they are affecting the most efficient solution also called beta greatly as well as the techniques required and consequently also have an impact on the grade of a certain problem that is otherwise only defined in the form of handholds. On a side note, I want to mention that we do set stepping rules only indoors for training purposes. Outdoors we usually just simply utilize what's available. If a handhold or foothold is forbidden outdoors, we call this an elimination, which is rare, but can occur if certain holds are suspected to break out, for example. Let's start with mode number one, which is simply stepping everything that is available on the spray wall. This can be very convenient for spray wall beginners as it makes creating new problems very uncomplicated and for any given problem this mode will yield the easiest grade obviously since there are no limitations. It can also be practical to warm up on a problem in mode 1. Could be that it actually has to be climbed in another mode but you're still using the required handholds so you still get the specific finger warm up. I did this recently on my Pink Crimp 7C and it turned out that I could find a solution without shoes this way, which spared me some more climbing shoe time and it also led to climbing the boulder with a couple of different techniques compared to the original climb, which made the problem interesting again and yielded a nice mechanical learning effect. Mode number 2 is very common and mostly referred to as hand foot climbing I think. I'm not sure how it's actually called in the English speaking world but yeah correct me if I'm wrong. It essentially means that you're only allowed to step those holds which are also used as hand holds while climbing the problem. On color pure problems of modern bouldering gyms usually this mode applies. On spray walls it is common as well, albeit there is usually some footholds defined for starting like a screw on or two as otherwise starting would often be quite impossible. The hand foot mode also bears the potential to yield the hardest grade of any given problem compared to other modes although this must not necessarily be so. Regarding the 7C on hand, hand foot stepping would definitely upgrade it to 7C plus or something, for me at least, since there is now one significant morpho move. Other moves are quite doable, which leads me to a little modification of mode 2, which is adding defined footholds. This can be used to bridge sequences which would otherwise be much harder, like in my case the morpho move. Just simply adding this foothold for my left foot would allow me to try this without too much hopelessness. Defining additional footholds is always a useful option to make problems more doable and fine tune the grade so that it becomes just as hard as you need it for your training. Mode number 3 is stepping only screw-ons. These are those little suckers which are mounted solely via small screws, in contrast to bigger holes with at least one big central screw. It should be mentioned though that big screw-on holes exist as well in the form of some volumes for example. This mode is amazing for training stepping accuracy and body strength, since the target footholds have only very small and shallow edges to bite into. The amazing thing about this is that it mimics outdoor stepping quite well where we struggle with small footholds frequently. One modification of mode 3 is taking these effects to the extreme which is wooden screw-ons. If they stay on the wall a little longer they will become smooth and greasy almost like polished outdoor limestone which sounds like horror at first. However this can spare skin and climbing shoe rubber in the long run and can thus make a wall more trainable so to say. Additionally, you need to be even more precise and you need to bite into those footholds even more actively, all of which bearing potential to take your stepping to the next level. The 7C we're looking at here was originally defined with only stepping wooden screw-ons from start to finish and yes, this means without stepping handholds as well, which represents yet another modification, screw-ons plus handholds, kind of a mix between mode 2 and 3, and yet another possibility for fine-tuning the difficulty of a problem to your needs. 
Making all of these stepping modes available to the spray wall bowler is the task of a good spray wall setter. I'd recommend having a mesh of normal screw-ons and on top of that a mesh of wooden screw-ons set, so that people can switch modes and make problems more interesting that way. I always advise spray wall builders and setters to use a smooth material for the wall itself, nothing sanded, because you don't want to sand off finger and shoe tips when getting the most out of your really small holes. A coarse mesh of good handholds doesn't hurt as well, this way you can easily get to all spots on the wall to check out stuff if needed. And then don't forget some big signature holds to have some targets for big and dynamic moves as well. And voila, a wonderful spray wall is ready to rip some people apart. I hope I could shine some light on some of the spray wall stepping rules and their use. Let me know what you think down below and leave a like, that's always appreciated. Stay strong and I'll see you soon in the next one. Bye.